Hello and welcome to another episode of Grammar and Thongs, where today we're looking at the word whose and the word whose. Now these are two words that sound the same, but they're spelt differently. They also mean different things. So when a word sounds the same and means different things, it's called a homophone, and that's what we're dealing with here. But it can make it tricky to know which word to use in which circumstances. And we all make mistakes, but hopefully if I explain each of these words, it will help you to use it correctly in the future. So the first word we've got is whose in the sense of a possessive pronoun. That is a word that we use to show to whom something belongs. And that's this first one, whose. H-W-H-O-S-E. Okay, so for example, if you were to say whose motorbike is that? That's the correct spelling there. Whose motorbike is that? The other way we can think of the word whose is as a contraction. So a contraction of the word who plus is or the word who plus has. So we've got who, an apostrophe to indicate that there's a word missing or some, sorry, a letter or some letters missing, and then the S. So we've got who is or who has, as in who is that guy? So we've got who's that guy? Or who has got the keys would become who's got the keys. You can also contract the word who and have, and you get the separate word who've, as in all the students who've finished their homework can go early for lunch. Okay. I think one of the reasons why this is tricky for some people is because it is counterintuitive in a way. For example, if we say Tim's book, we're taught that we need a possessive apostrophe, and the apostrophe shows that the book belongs to Tim. It indicates possession. So why then wouldn't you have whose book is that with this apostrophe to indicate possession? That's what makes it tricky because, of course, this should be whose book is that. So one way that might help to remember the rule is if you think about the word its versus its, which we talked about in a previous video. Um, if you remember, its with an apostrophe is a contraction of it is or it has. So very similar to what we just spoke about with whose, whereas its without the apostrophe is the possessive form of the word. Uh, so that was tricky with its versus its, but hopefully if you've got a handle on that, then you remember that when you're thinking about whose versus whose, and you remember that the apostrophe is only for when you're contracting two words, squashing them together, and the possessive is actually whose, W-H-O-S-E, as it is with I-T-S, no apostrophe. And while we're on the subject, let's talk about the word whom, because that's the other one that trips people up a lot. When do you use who and when do you use whom? Well, this is also easy to remember if you know the rule. Who is a subject pronoun, whereas whom is an object pronoun. So if you remember our lesson about subject and object and where they go in a sentence, that will help. But basically, he, she, I, words like this and they, they're all subject pronouns. Let me put a line here. And so you would use who if it's, in, if it's in place of he, she, I, or they. Whereas whom are object pronouns. So here we're talking about him, her, me, them. Those sort of pronouns. So you would use whom if it's in place of those sort of pronouns. If we go back to our much earlier example of Romeo versus, uh, sorry, Romeo loves Juliet, um, it might make sense. In this very simple sentence, Romeo is the subject, loves is the verb, and Juliet is the object of Romeo's affection. So if we apply this rule and we wanted to replace Juliet, it's an object, so it would have to be whom. Romeo loves whom, as a question, because it would be the object pronoun her. Romeo loves her. If we look at the subject, then according to this rule, it should be who. So it would be 
who loves Juliet if we were replacing the subject? Because you would be using the pronoun he from this list. So who and whom, the correct one to use depends on whether you're replacing the subject or the object. Thank you.